sitting here contemplating between melancholy and frustration. Where have the years gone? As I think about my 87th year coming up and how I feel, unfortunately, I feel as if I'm 40. Yeah, I do. I have all the wants and the likes and the mental energy to do all the things that I was doing back in my 40s. However, <laughs> in reality, those things aren't happening. And between a little melancholy, as I think back, get into that nostalgia. Now, now that nostalgia, ladies, can be wonderful, but it can also be a little dangerous because it might send you into a, a mental slump because what was happening in those younger years is not happening today. And as I'm getting ready to go out because I do have some chores to do, I, I'm just thinking, just give me back a little bit of the family time and the fun and the anticipation of the years ahead which I don't have right now. So you say, okay, Nanny, why are you feeling melancholy or frustrated? Melancholy is a, a good feeling, a, a sort of, I'm not gonna say sad, just a, a whimsical memory of things from the past. And frustration, is the fact that you are not in the past doing all those things. You are not 40 years old. And the years ahead of you are not that big, long, drawn out, long life to do all the things that you dream of and want to. Now, for instance, let me just name a few things. I still have such a strong interest in decorating. I I just love the idea of pulling out some of my treasures and putting my plates on the wall like I have up here. I love changing out the mantle. Now, living in a tiny cottage is very different from living in a 5,000 square foot house uh, in the country <laughs> with some acreage. And I could decorate room after room and still decorate more. Now, I don't still yearn for that because our life is so different now and we're near children. We're so fortunate to live in this little tiny cottage. Yes, it has its disadvantages. And someone said, what a shame you don't have um, a big closet. And what a shame you don't have this or, you know, it's not a shame. It's a, it's a different life for us. Moosey and I are extremely happy and big closets and big kitchens, baloney, I don't need those anymore. I think my kitchen is quaint and cute with with some of the cabinets that I have painted and, and refurbished. I, I love my little cottage. Yes, I have clothes coming out my ears, but you know, that's all part of me. And, and it do, that's the part that does not frustrate me, believe it or not. You would think it would, but it doesn't. So, <laughs> so, I am happy where we are. Moosey and, and Moosey and I are, are so grateful for for living here in this environment with Colleen and her hubby and the kids. And we're far enough away from them that we can have separate lives too. We're, we're not breathing in everybody's neck. <clears throat> but in the, in the days of yore, I was trying to think all the big total family things that we did. Every weekend we were doing something where the whole family was invited. And I remembered that a lot of those things during the course of the year were at our home because our home was huge. We had big, big giant rooms. We had a kitchen that was as big as this whole cottage, <laughs> a country kitchen with um, barn wood and a, a big giant eight foot table in the middle of the room where, where all of us would sit around and everything. 
I, I'm now yearning for those days because they were wonderful and they are part of the past. But I do think of them and do get a little melancholy because we don't do that anymore. Now, some of the other things we did, we took family trips to Ireland, um, you know, 30, 40 of us on a, on a plane and then on a big bus and, and families with children and for us, grandkids. And we, we were fit and able. We were still in our, I would say, early 70s, mid 70s. And honestly, ladies, those that you are there, you are capable of, of being part of all that big family stuff. We went to Mexico with some of the kids. We went to Europe with Mikey and Sabrina and, and some of his children. We, we went to Hawaii before we had a house up in Big Bear. We, we rented a home and everybody went up there. So we, we did so much together as a family. And almost every day I was with um, kids and, and grandkids shopping or did a lot of babysitting. So we were a viable part of, of a big, big family. But as I realized, we were the ones that were planning a lot of these things. We owned our own big giant uh, lodge up in Big Bear, right on the lake. And we had wonderful family times. So glad we had that winter skiing and <clears throat> sitting around the big, big stone fireplace. And, and we had a boat in the summer and a dock and we were out on the lake. When I think back of the wonderful times that we had with family, it was wonderful. And that's the melancholy part. The frustration part of it all is is that we're not we're not doing that anymore now is it because we don't have the big home is it because we don't have the house in big bear or is it because we are at an age in our mid 80s where the the children are wonderful about caring for us and making sure that we have what we need and the help that we need around here. All of that is great, but we don't have those big family things too much anymore. And that part kind of gets me from time to time. But you know what I have to learn? And this is the lesson that I'm going to tell so many of you at this stage of life it's different. There's no getting around it. We don't have the physical energy anymore to bop around all over the world with kids or or even to spend a day or, or a weekend or what. Now, yes, we do, but not to, to the extent that the kids do. The point is, we have to learn to accept our stage. I have to learn that I don't have tons of years ahead of me to decorate and to go out and buy things for a house and do things that I would look forward to for years and years. That's not what it's like anymore. So I have to accept the fact that this is the last 10, 15% of our lives. And I have to be happy and grateful for what we do have. And that's a lot, an awful lot. And that we still have a wonderful family I do accept it, believe it or not. I do accept our life at this stage, but I have a little bit of melancholy too. Now, is that okay? I think it is. I'm not depressed. I'm not unhappy. <laughs> I just think about it and treasure those years. And I'm so grateful for them, but I would like a little bit more of it. Is that wrong? So now my analogy is not melancholy and frustration. It's acceptance and gratefulness. Can you also accept your present life and be grateful for your past life? I hope so. I think we found a cool spot back here, oh, haven't we? Cool. I think it's only about 85. <laughs> That's not too bad, huh? Did you enjoy your breakfast this morning? Being a Sunday, I had a great breakfast. Lots of scrambled eggs and ham, English muffins. 
yummy. And I knew because I got that great breakfast. Yes. It must be a chore day. And what does that mean for Moosey? Uh, that means he has to water the garden, clean the kitchen, shave his whiskers off, and what else? Take uh, a snooze, probably, after all that. Well, there is a baseball game on at the one o'clock. So. Oh, okay. It's called occupational therapy, see? <laughs> you yeah. got to keep going. You know what I was thinking as we pretty much had a, an uneventful Saturday and a pretty uneventful week other than, what did we do? We had a couple of doctor appointments. We went to Newport, drove down to Newport, got your hearing aids all cleaned and you are restored. A hearing person. You hear me now. <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> you tell me what you're thinking about our quiet week or quiet weekend. Boring. <laughs> Isn't it funny that you can say that at 87, that how old you are? How can one get bored at 87? That means that you're so used to activities. Why, what makes it boring? Tell me, to you, what makes life boring? I like to have at least one thing to look forward to in the week. Right. Coming, you know, like we're going to see the baby there or we're going to go for lunch. Or somebody's coming over. Yeah. I, we didn't have one this week. No, we just, didn't. Just go down to get my ears fixed. <laughs> but if we plan one of those, it makes a great life for me. I just like to do little things. They're not big things. I feel that there's a breeze now. I just felt that. And that takes us down about five degrees. Yeah. Yep. Well, we can always go in and sit in the patio where I have my unpainted rocks waiting for me to get back to it. My next project, though, um, is the um, pumpkin wine glass project. And That's going to take up a lot of room. No. Did I tell you that I'm hoping to do it at Debbie's office with her? Uh -huh. What do you think? Do you think she'll go for it? It depends on her day or her week. You know, she has to squeeze you in if she's got a busy period. Well, you know, I already have an invitation to have lunch with her one day this week, so I have something to look forward to. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Ding and dong, I don't have anything yet. Something will show up, though, won't it? It will. It will. got to see one of those babies or a couple of those babies. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Dubby said she wants to uh, wants me to come over to the office and we'll have lunch and maybe we'll bop around some of the cute little shops, thrift shops and things in town. But I thought maybe we could eat lunch at the office and, and go and sit in one of the conference rooms and do this together because she's the one that told me about that, that um, craft project. Well, I think I'll start one of my little daily chores. I think I'll go do the dishes. <laughs> well, that's something to look forward to, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. God bless. Cheers to a busy day. <laughs> In here? Yeah. Thank you. Well, as you can see, I'm parked in Del Taco. <laughs> I started to go out to the kitchen it's about 4 30 and i thought what am i gonna make for supper it's one of those hot days don't feel like eating anything right now and moose said why don't you go to mickey d's or del tacos so i did and i just got some fish tacos some chicken quesadillas some nachos and I wanted to get Moosey a vanilla shake, but evidently it's so hot, the machines aren't working. So there's no shakes at all. <laughs> That's how hot it is here. My big outing for tomorrow, and I've sort of been threatened by <laughs> Brendan and a couple of other people, is to get this car washed. Yesterday, I was watching one of my YouTube creator buddies, Sandra Salad. And Sandra's channel 
it is, is mostly about the makeup that she uses and the way she talks. She's so fun, fun loving and, and energetic about all the things she's doing. And she keeps finding these wonderful makeups. They're very high end, but they're wonderful. And she talks about all the colorful lipsticks and everything. Well, yesterday <clears throat> she did, she found a makeup because she thought about the fact that she, it was summertime, summertime, summertime. She sang the song and she got me all ready to go. <laughs> and she used a makeup by IQ and uh, it's on the high end. You might want to look into it. Go watch Sandra and you'll see. But she wanted to look as if she was uh, Malibu Sandy <laughs> or, or uh, what was the other term she used? I can't remember, but they were funny. And she wanted that, that summer glow look of being tan and sun-kissed. Well, I loved it. She did a great job of putting this. It was a tint, a skin tint that was dark enough to honestly make her look as if she just stepped off the beach. And it wasn't anything heavy. I don't even think it was a foundation. She called it a skin tint. And it did give her that um, sort of a, a darkish, maybe a little reddish. She was worried whether it would come out too red, but I thought it was great. And honestly, you could have fooled me. It was a great summer beachy look. And I thought to myself, I'd like to do that, but I don't want to spend any more high-end, well, I don't buy high-end makeup anyway, but I don't really want to spend any more big-time money on all this because, well, <laughs> I just don't. So I did think about it. I looked on Amazon to see if I could find maybe a dupe to this IQ skin tint. And I, I think I might have, as I also looked through all my old makeups and I, I pulled out a bunch of old things that are not in my everyday routine right now. And I did find a couple of them. I found a, a skin enhancer, which, but none of them seem dark enough. Now this skin enhancer, who's this, who does that? Neutrogena skin enhancer, but it's not dark enough. But then I thought, well, I do have these bronzers. And as you can see, you, you could do that, but that doesn't give you the overall look. I have some e.l.f. primers and I've used all these in the past. I have the uh, e.l.f. Halo Glow, but that's not giving me that reddish beachy look. But then I came across something that I had sent for quite a while ago. And it's made by L'Oreal Paris, I believe. I think, yeah, L'Oreal. And it's that Lumi Glow, they call it Lumi Glotion. And I did buy it and I loved it because you know me, I love that glow on my face. But, and, and actually my skin is a ruddy complexion. I don't have that, um, porcelain look to my skin. It is ruddy. And naturally, when I do my facial yoga, I do get the red and the blood back in my face. It doesn't last for too long. But I went on the Amazon site for the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion, and I found a deeper color. And I sent for it. I think it was only $12, $13. And it should come tomorrow, and I'm going to show you. Now, I think that might be the color. It calls it a skin enhancer or something. It's not really a foundation, I don't think, but we'll try it. Now, today I tried to do a dupe of Sandra's Malibu Sandy look, <laughs> and I don't know whether I achieved it or not. Still have my little glow on my nose, but I used a number of things. I think I did use, what did I use? I think I, I, did, I, think I did the Lumi now, I don't remember which one I used, but then I got going with some of my bronzers to give that look, but I would love to see if the deep, I sent for the um, next to darkest shade, and I want to see if it works. So that's that. So my friends, I know I've told you about uh, Sandra before, and a lot of you went over to check her out, but if you haven't, especially a lot of the new ladies, Go to see Sandra. You you really will love her. Sandra is only, <laughs> I think she's 83, only 83, but uh, she's a love, and I think you'll enjoy her.
So I'm going to go outside for a little while and then we're off to go to the market. I need ice and a few other things. Of course, ice is a wonderful thing to think of right now. And, and then I'll catch you later when we're outside. So I have my hat on ready to go out and a cool blouse. I think this is one of the ones that's sort of a, a, oh, I don't know, that boho look, very, very lightweight and um, just a, a cute little, very loose top. So what are we going to have for supper tonight? I'm getting kind of tired of, of doing any warm meals. And I remember in the summertime back east when I was growing up, my mother had plans for all kinds of, of cold summer su suppers. And I'm going to try and do some of those. Uh, I, normally I do a couple of them with my cold pastas, but I have some other ideas. I have hard boiled about six or seven eggs. So being a lover of deviled eggs, I'm going to make some of those. And my idea was to do a charcuterie type of a, a supper tonight. I said to Moosey the other day, Shamu and I are alike in a lot of ways. Now, as you know, Shamu is my cat. Shamu and I, so far as our eating habits, are grazers. <laughs> are you enjoying sleeping on the piano? Yes. It's very nice on a hot day, isn't it? Where are you going? Gonna get down? Gonna go graze? On something in the kitchen? Okay. I have to keep this down for her here so she can get up on the piano and she sits and looks out on the patio. This is where she sleeps and prefers to be during the heat of the day. Shamu does not like to eat a whole lot at one time. So I'm constantly putting little handfuls of food, filling up his water every once in a while and giving him a little wet food every once in a while because day and night, he just grazes. We are, are grazers. When I get up in the morning, and I know, I've told you this before, I'm a crazy morning eater. I crave things like pickled artichokes, herring, kippers, I would love a roll mop if I could find them anywhere. Now, those of you go ahead and look up what a roll mop is. I think mostly you can get them in England, but I do know there are places around here. I'm gonna try and find where I can pick up some roll mops or make them my own. I'm not gonna tell you what they are because you probably would gag, but <laughs> that's what I crave. I crave broccoli dipped in some dill dip along with sliced cucumbers or whatever. And sometimes I can get down some cottage cheese with some berries in it. Now, Sunday morning, I did make scrambled eggs and they were good and I know they're good for you. And I'm always trying to get my protein in in the morning. I do have my morning energy back, that's for sure. Once in a while, I love a good Greek yogurt, but my craving kind of went out almost all the time. So going along with that theory, I think tonight we're going to do a charcuterie type of a supper. I have a great charcuterie board with the little uh, knives and everything, and I'm gonna set it up. And I do have some pastrami and a salami. I do have actually all kinds of cheeses. They've been just sitting in there waiting for me to bring them out. I have some great brie that I love. Sometimes I uh, put the brie in the oven and um, soften it up on crackers. That's good. What do I have? I did cook a bunch of edamame and I have chickpeas. In fact, I made a Mediterranean salad the other night with um, Kalmata olives and green olives and uh, edamame and chickpeas and cucumbers. And I put this vinaigrette, sort of a, a light Caesar oily dressing on it. It was wonderful. It was so good that I had to send some up to Colleen. I think I'll make that for you maybe this week or next week. But I think for tonight, we're gonna have a charcuterie. Put a little tomatoes in. Now I don't have, I'm running out of my tomatoes. I'm getting down there. But I do have some grapes and um, some fruit. And I think that's what we're gonna have tonight. So I'm gonna start peeling some eggs. And perhaps when I get the 
charcuterie board all put together tonight. I will show it to you right before we're ready to eat. Eating. Moosey and I have several Red Lobster gift cards that the kids have given to us over the past couple of months. And I read that a lot of the Red Lobster restaurants are closing. And so we have decided that we better get to our favorite Red Lobster restaurant for those. The, now I will eat the lobster right all, all the way through. Maybe some of, of those coconut shrimp. Moosey sometimes does the surf and turf. But if he gets an extra uh, lobster, he'll hand it over to me. Dip it in that butter and those cheese biscuits. I can't wait to do it, but we're gonna wait until this heat wave is over. And our local one is still here and I don't think they're planning on closing that one. But I know they've closed a lot of restaurants. So we're looking forward to that too. So I'm gonna get busy peeling. Now I know a good way to do this. Peeling a hard boiled egg is very frustrating, I know. But my trick is to run it under cold water, sort of crack it a bit first. Run it under cold water, let the cold water kind of get inside and it does come off in nice big chunks. I have a good start here. Look at this, let's hope it goes all the way around as I'm peeling, peeling up. Oh, didn't get it to go all the way, but the whole top is off. As long as you crack it enough to get that cold water in there and then the rest of it comes off and there you go. For years and years I didn't know how to do this. One down, six to go. Well, here is the charcuterie board that I just made that Moosey and I will have for our early supper. I've made some deviled eggs. I have some salami, some cream cheese and chives, um, port wine with nuts, apples. What is that? That's a, uh, oh, that's not Gouda. Mm. That's something else. Grapes, crackers, pretzel sticks. <laughs> um, this is ham, little pieces of ham. This is Havarti cheese. This particular one is supposed to be hot, but it's not too hot. Regular cheddar. Ooh. Oh boy, port wine. Doesn't that look yummy? Can we finish it all? I don't think so, no. <laughs> and over here we have some scoops of tortilla chips and our plates and our napkins are ready to go. And I think we're gonna have this in our bed. How's that, Mose? For a week. <laughs> For a week, he says. I know, then I have to put it all away if we don't eat it. So this is our supper tonight. Nice and cool, but it took forever to assemble. Well, Moosey says it's too hot to go out and gallivant around. <laughs> and he's probably right. <clears throat> so I think I will close right here. I hope you enjoyed our little melancholy, frustration, acceptance, gratitude type of a video. We're going to talk more about that acceptance of our life at this end game. And um, I'll work up to it little by little. And I think you all will be ready to talk about this in a good positive way. Thanks so much for watching and for binging all the rest of our videos. We, we have 515, I think by now. And I don't know what in heaven's name I talked about all those videos, but somehow I managed. Watch for the next video. I'm waiting to hear from Dubby as to when we'll do our craft and where we'll do our craft. And I'll let you know in time so that you'll be sure not to miss it. Goodbye. See you in a couple days. Love you and God bless us all.